using Periscope for Business, exploring three key updates to the Periscope app that were released on the 8th of April, version 1.02 for the iPhone. Hi, my name is Krishna Day. You'll find me online at krishnaday.com, krishna.me, and on Twitter at Krishna Day. I just want to explore three key updates that I see from the new update to Periscope, which was released in the App Store on the 8th of April. So the first suggestion I have for you is make sure you download the app from the App Store. There are a number of bug fixes that include issues with scrolling performance. Um, like me, you might have had an issue where you saw the wrong profile picture for somebody on Periscope. That's now been fixed. And also, I had situations where I wouldn't, wasn't able to see people commenting, or particularly in terms of questions that they were asking when I was live streaming, and that has now been fixed. So let's go through what I see are the three key updates. And I've just got here screenshots. So firstly, here on the left-hand side, you'll see there's an additional icon that's been put in here. So on the TV screen button here on the left-hand side, when I'm looking at it, I actually, when I took this screenshot, I could see there was nobody live streaming at this point in time in terms of in my region. If I click over to the globe area, that picks up anybody who's live streaming across the globe at this point in time. So this is great that there's a regional feature. Now, what we might want to do is if we move from one region to another, I'm not sure what those geographic boundaries are in terms of whether that moves. So those of us who are traveling, it'd be interesting to hear if you actually find that. So if I'm traveling in the next week or so, I'll let you know what happens if I go between one country or another, or if it's just European regions. It's not clear about how broad that is going to be. Also, what I saw here is there were some featured um, pieces of content there. I'm not sure what accounts for it being featured or why Periscope is identifying that. I haven't been able to understand that at this point in time. But I think this is really helpful. So you can actually now see people who you're following. It's going to be highlighted there on the left-hand side under that TV button. And if there's nothing going on locally, then you actually can scroll down, see past replays, and also then go over to the globe button where you'll see things around the globe. The second thing that I want to show you about is when you start to live stream. So that's this thing in the middle here. And it actually gives me the opportunity, as before, to put in my title for my live stream. And I can start the broadcast. But what we see here is an additional icon. So the one on the left-hand side would allow me to put in the location where I am. I personally don't leave that there for privacy reasons. The one in the middle here, uh, in terms of this little lock that you can see, um, that is to do with if you want to send out private live streams, so just inviting specific people to watch. This is the new one that I've highlighted here. So now what you can do is you can click this. If you only want to allow people to actually leave comments in the chat from people that you follow. And I can turn that on or off. I think that's particularly important for people who have got a lot of following who are celebrities. For many of us, it may not be appropriate um, to turn that on or off. And the final area here on the right hand side, in case you weren't aware, that allows you to share the fact that you're starting your live stream over to Twitter. But as I said, I just want to show you this new button here, which you can turn on or off, which basically restricts the number of people who would be able to comment should you choose to turn that on. And the final one I want to show you, this is a, a live stream I was watching of an artist who was painting a panda. And I have to say that this person I wasn't identifying as spam, but just to, to show you how this works. When you're watching a live stream, one of the challenges has been is to how to quickly identify somebody who's a spam commenter and you want to block them. So it was several steps to do that previously. Now, in a previous review I did of Periscope, one of the things I identified was an issue is about how to report people who are spam commenters. So what we can do now is somebody is commenting and they're being obscene, which I've unfortunately seen quite a lot of times, um, or they're harassing somebody and we really want to block that person. Either the person who's managing the broadcast or in fact, as a commenter, somebody who's watching that broadcast, you actually can just click on the avatar of the person and then what happens is it gives you the option not only just to view the profile, which you could do before to find out more about the person and even follow them from there, 
but you actually have the opportunity with one click now to block the user. So that's very helpful if you're actually in the middle of watching something. It might be a good idea for you to have somebody with you as a moderator um, for your channel. They could be watching on another device and giving you feedback. Or the other thing I've seen people do is they've broadcast, they've not been looking at the screen themselves, but they've actually had other, another person asking them questions that's come up from the comments because it's really hard to actually focus on your content at the same time as actually looking at the questions that come up. So you may want to have somebody with you who's actually really you might call them the producer for your live stream. So there, what I see are three key updates to actually familiarize yourself with. And I think that's going to make it a much better experience for us in terms of using Periscope going forward. I had the opportunity and you might want to still go back there if you see this and the replay is still available over by Periscope. If you go to the Periscope Twitter account, you'll see a link to um, their video that they did. They did a, a, a welcome to the Periscope headquarters and they did a, a great little review of actually walking through their office. And two things that they said, and what you can see here over on the right hand side, is that that was somebody who was actually broadcasting, live streaming, um, actually testing it out on Android. I know that's a key issue in terms of whether it be Meerkat, if you're using that, or Periscope, or if you're like me, I'm using both, then to be able to use Periscope on Android. So they just showed in the live stream somebody actually testing out the broadcasting and live streaming using an Android. And the other thing that they did say in the live stream was that they're also working in terms of this not only being available for portrait uh, broadcasting, but also you can do so in landscape. So that will be a really great development once that gets released. So I'd suggest um, make sure you follow them over on Twitter to get all of their updates. If you do have questions about live streaming, be that on Google Hangouts on Air, Meerkat, Periscope, you're thinking about using this inside your organization or publicly for events, by all means, leave me your questions. Leave them here on the video as you see it. Um, find me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Pinterest, on Instagram, of course, on Periscope, on Meerkat. Um, wherever you can leave me a question, I'm more than happy to answer the questions if I can do. Or perhaps if I don't know the answer, I may know somebody who can help us out. So live streaming is becoming even more prevalent for organizations. And I really encourage you to start to think about how you could use it both for internal communications and also for external communications. With the release of Meerkat and Periscope, it just makes it so much easier to be able to do so from our mobile devices. I also want to also mention a couple of other resources for you if you're looking for more tips about specifically Meerkat and Periscope. You can follow me over at Pinterest, pinterest.com forward slash Krishna Day, and there what you can find are some tips around how to market with Meerkat, how to market with Periscope as boards I've curated. So I'm constantly adding some of the best articles and resources I can find over to those channels. So um, do head over there and look to find those boards. The other thing I've done is on one of my YouTube channels, so that's Krishna Day Online on YouTube, I've actually created a playlist of videos that I've created. So I've done um, introductions to Periscope, introductions to using Meerkat, enhancements I was looking for in terms of uh, using Periscope in terms of to enhance the user experience. And some of those have come about as a result of uh, this new app. So I'm sure it wasn't me that prompted that, but uh, some of the things I talked about in that, in fact, it was a Periscope stream I did um, and uh, covered some tips in there about what I would like to see. I also have uh, talked about how to make sure you're adding more Twitter accounts, if you wish to, to Meerkat. And it also works for Periscope because many of us have got multiple Twitter accounts and we want to broadcast under different accounts. So lots of different tips there. More will be coming, I'm sure, over the weeks ahead. And please don't hesitate to ask me your questions. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of these tips. And I'd love to know about your experience, about how you're using Meerkat and Periscope in your organization, or of course, at Google Hangouts on Air. Um, do let me know if you're finding this successful and any tips that you're finding for the kind of content that you're creating. Thanks again for watching and look forward to sharing more tips with you again in the future.